Here's a question that looks like it's going to become a discrete random variable question since we're given a probability distribution and we're looking for the expected value and the variance of x, although we've got to show that earlier in the question, so we'll need to use some sort of probability method here. So a couple plan to have at least one child of each sex, after which they will have no more children. However, if they have four children of one sex, they will have no more children. So picture this couple, they're wanting to have some children and they want at least one boy and one girl and it doesn't really matter what order they have the boy and the girl in, but as soon as they've got one of each, they're going to stop having children or they'll keep on going and if they get to the point where they've got four boys or they've got four girls, they'll stop having children at that point. And in the question then it says we should assume that each child is equally likely to be of either sex and that the sexes of the children are independent. So that means we're effectively being told that the probability of having a boy or a girl is a half and that um, we can use the AND rule for multiplying because the probabilities are independent. The probability of having a boy and then a girl will be probability of having a boy multiplied by the probability of having a girl and so on. And the random variable x represents the total number of girls the couples have. So we're looking for the probability that x equals 1. So that means the total number of girls is going to be 1. So we need to consider all the possible outcomes that end up with one girl. Now we can do this quite systematically, either by looking at the scenario of having four children altogether, including one girl, and work back down until we have just one of each, or work in the opposite order. I happen to have chosen to start with this situation, where they had a boy, then a boy, then a boy, and then a girl. So that's a scenario with one girl. Or... They could have had just two boys and then a girl, or one boy and then a girl. So these scenarios all have one girl in them. But this assumes that the firstborn child was a boy, but of course it could be that they have the one girl first and then a boy. We couldn't have any other numbers um, which would give us one girl. So for example, girl, boy, boy wouldn't happen because they'd have stopped once they had the one of each. So that's all of the scenarios that we're interested in. And it's worth noting that boy-girl and girl-boy are two different situations. So we were given in the question that it was equally likely that the child would be of either sex. So we've got the probabilities there. Probability of a girl is a half and probability of a boy is a half. So now that I've got my different possible outcomes, I just need to find the probabilities of these outcomes. So the probability of this first scenario, so a boy and then a boy and then a boy and then a girl, that's going to be a half multiplied by a half multiplied by a half multiplied by a half, or a quicker way to write that will be a half to the power of four. Similarly, the next one is a half times a half times a half, or a half cubed, and then for boy-girl, we get a half squared, and for girl-boy, we get a half squared. So that's the probability of any of these particular outcomes, and we want to have any of these. So it's the first probability, or the next situation, or the next one, or the next one. So we're going to add up these probabilities. So um, probability that x equals 1 is the first one a half to the power of 4, that's 1 over 2 to the 4, so a 16th. And then the next one we've got a half cubed, which is an 8th. And then we've got a half squared and a half squared, so that's a quarter and a quarter. So I'll just, because this is a show that question and we're given the answers, I'll show a line of working. So I'm going to make common denominators, so 8 times 2 would be 16, so do the same to the numerator. 1 times 2 is 2, so that's 2 sixteenths. And then for these quarters, 4 times 4 will be 16, so do the same to the numerator. That's going to give me 4 sixteenths and 4 sixteenths. And then if I add those up, I'll just check. 1 add 2 will be 3, add 4 is 7, add 4 is 11. So I do indeed get 11 sixteenths, which was the required value. In the second part of the question, we're asked to find the expected value of x and the variance of x. So there's a couple of formulae we need to know because these are not in the formula booklet. 
So first of all, the expected value of x, which also gets notated as mu, that's a Greek letter m, m for mean would be a good way of thinking of it. And the formula for this is that it's the sum of the r values multiplied by the probability that x equals r. So that means r multiplied by the probability, so like 0 multiplied by a sixteenth, and the sum, so add 1 multiplied by 11 sixteenths, add 2 multiplied by an eighth, and so on. Now I could type this sum into the calculator, but there's a quicker way of doing this using the stats mode on the calculator, which actually makes things a bit easier. This is using the uh, stats mode with the frequency switched on. If I type in the R values, so 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 under X, and then the probabilities under frequency, what will happen? If I want to do the sum of X, usually we do this when we're calculating a mean. To get the sum of X, we'd need the frequency times the X value plus the frequency times the X value. So actually, when the calculator says sum of X, it means sum of FX. So it really just means it's going to add up all these values of x multiplied by the frequency. But that's exactly what I want to add up here. So in fact, the sum of x from the calculator in this mode gives me exactly the same thing as if I were to work out the whole sum using what I've written here. So I'm going to use that shortcut to write down my final answer of 1.375. Similarly, I can use what I've already entered to find the variance of x. So the formula for the variance of x is the sum of r squared multiplied by the probabilities and then minus the expected value squared. So what that means is I need to do r squared, so 0 squared times 1 16th and add on 1 squared times 11 16th and add on 2 squared times an eighth and so on and then subtract the mean, this mu value that I've got squared, from that sum. So writing it out, this is the values that I would get, but actually what I really need to do then is use sigma x squared from the calculator. That's a much quicker way of doing it, because sigma x squared here will actually be doing these x values squared multiplied by the frequencies, but I've used probabilities for frequencies, so that's actually going to work out. You can see here as I was typing it in, that's the fourth one that's highlighted. When I typed in 1 16th, that's showing 1 16th. So these decimals are actually just the frequencies um, which I typed in were the probabilities there. So that means the sum of x squared is 2.75, which means that really not the sum of x squared so much as the sum of r squared times the probabilities, but that gives me 2.75. Then I subtract the mean squared, so remembering that mu was the expected value of x, so that value squared, and if I just calculate that, I can see that I get 0 0.859375, so three significant figures would be the suitable rounding to do here. So 859 are my first three non-zero digits, look at the next digit, it's not a 5 or above, so I won't round up. So I'll leave my final answer as 0 0.859, and I'll just note that I've rounded that to three significant figures. The mark scheme shows the same method of working effectively that I did, also an alternative of doing 1 minus the outcomes that we're not interested in. Now in this case, there were four ways of getting one goal, and four ways of not getting one goal. So it's not particularly quicker to do either way. But if we'd had a question where maybe there were four ways of getting one goal, but only two ways not to, then doing one minus the number of ways of not getting a goal could have been a quicker method. In this case, it's not particularly any easier to do this one minus here. There are a couple of method marks here, and then in the next part of the question as well. So lots of places where you can score marks for method um, rather than necessarily for the final answer. And we were given the value of 11 sixteenths in the first question, so there had to be lots of detail in showing what we were actually doing to end up with that final answer. And it says here, answer given. So there wouldn't be any credit, obviously, for just writing down 11 sixteenths. And then 
the expectation of x, here it is with the sum written out with all those products, each one with the x, or rather the r value multiplied by its probability, and those are added up, and then the formula used to find the variance of x.